Hi, and welcome to our next section here in our chapter on information theory. So you might, I don't know, see this session here as one of the most important in the whole chapter on information theory, because basically this will connect everything that we have learned in this chapter to basically everything else in uh, machine learning, so specifically risk minimization. So what we're going to learn here is that minimizing the kullback leibler is amounts to basically maximizing a log likelihood. Uh, it's also the same as minimizing cross entropy and it's and minimizing the cross entropy between modeled and observed probabilities is basically the same as log loss minimization. Okay, what does that mean? So, okay, so we've already introduced kullback leibler uh, and now uh, minimizing kullback leibler between the true distribution p of x and an approximating model, which we denote by q of x parameterized by a parameter vector theta, that's equivalent to maximizing the log likelihood as we can now easily see here on this slide. So what is kullback leibler Well, it is exactly this expectation here and we have looked at this before in the previous sessions. So if we now take apart the logarithm on the inside of the formula, we can write it as a difference between this expectation here, where we take the expectation with respect to distribution p yeah, of log of p of x and the log of q of x again when we take the expectation with respect to p. Now if we look at this a little bit more closely, it becomes very obvious and very apparent that the first term here, sorry, this guy, yeah, this first term does very apparently not depend on our parameter vector theta. So in terms of minimization, if you're just looking for the optimal theta, so the optimal param parameterization when we approximate p of x by q of x, this whole term does not matter. So we can disregard it and instead of minimizing kullback leibler we can simply maximize yeah, the positive side of things here. So we would maximize this expectation, the expectation of q of x yeah, with respect to theta when we take the expectation with respect to p of x. Okay, so this minimization here is equivalent to this minimization here, which is equivalent to exactly what I said, maximizing q of x, sorry, maximizing the expectation with respect to p of x of q of x. Yeah, and we, max, we solve this maximization problem for the optimal parameter vector theta. Now, if we do this in a finite data set with n samples from our distribution, from our true distribution p, this is simply approximated as this thing here, yeah, where our expectation becomes a finite sum over these uh, n samples. And you can now directly see that this is exactly the same as maximum likelihood yeah, because this is yeah, the maximum of the log likelihood of Q of model Q with respect to parameter vector theta. And because we have also covered before the equivalence between log likelihood maximization and risk minimization, you can also now see the correspondence between L minimization and risk minimization. We can look at this formula a little more in depth. Let's have understood nearly everything already. Yeah, let's, let's take a somewhat closer look. So we have here this minimization problem of kullback leibler between P and Q. And we've just explained that this is the same as minimizing this thing here. Yeah. Well, we said it's the same as, let's take a look at the formula before, we said it's the same as, well, maximizing this guy here, which is our, yeah, which is this, this positive expectation, or we can minimize this negative expectation here. So let's take a look at what, at what this negative expectation actually is. And we can immediately see from the formula, if we compare this, what we've introduced before, this is simply the cross entropy between P and Q, or I should probably rather say P and the parameterized Q, which is parameterized by theta. All of these things are now equivalent, yeah? So minimizing kullback leibler is the same as minimizing the cross entropy between P and Q theta, which is the same as maximum likelihood. 
What we could also do is because my introduction of the cross entropy, I guess when I defined the formula, wasn't really very intuitive. So I given, haven't really given a very intuitive, plausible explanation of the formula of cross entropy. Uh, and yeah, I, I tried this a little bit, but I was also referring a lot to this upcoming um, chapter on uh, efficient source coding uh, on channels, which is outside of what, out of scope of in a certain sense, out of context, what we're discussing here. I could know, I could, I have now a, a different way of motivating what cross entropy actually is. It's this relevant term that we have to minimize when we minimize kullback leibler It's the, the relevant thing that remains after we drop the negative entropy part. So this expectation of log of p, yeah? which doesn't depend on theta. If you simply remove that and then take a look at the rest, that's actually cross entropy. So we could actually say cross entropy between p and q is simply the ex expected negative log likelihood of q when our data comes from pre. And this is something that we have indeed also already discussed before in the chapter on kullback leibler Here's a very simple example. I'm not even sure whether this is that necessary. Yeah, nevertheless, I, I produced this here to make it very, very explicit. So again, we are looking at this example where our a density p of x is a standard Gaussian and our q of x is a Laplacian distribution here with a parameter theta, uh, sorry, sigma. And we now consider this minimization problem and we minimize the kullback leibler between p and q when it's parameterized. Yeah. When now my parameter theta is actually this sigma yeah, of the Laplacian. And I can now minimize that as a kullback leibler minimization problem, or I can minimize that through cross entropy. And as you can see, these two objective functions basically just differ by a constant shift, which is exactly the negative entropy. Okay. So yeah, it's exactly the shift is exactly, yeah, this term here, which I crossed out here. Okay. So maybe, I don't know, let's take a look at it again. Yeah, so this here is our constant shift, uh, which is the negative, negative entropy. Okay, there's a further connection, which now might also help you to understand a little bit this terminology where people use cross entropy actually for log loss minimization, which in certain senses may be a misnomer where Kind of a pass pro toto, uh, we, uh, but okay, let, let, let's look at this and then let's, let's come back to terminology again. So let's now actually look at classification. Let's look at a multi class classification data set where we have G classes, and as always, yeah, we have our classes encoded in the Y's. So the YIs are our classes, uh, and we could encode them with numbers from 1 to G, but we can also one hot encode them. So if there's like three classes and we want to encode class number two, I would do it like that. Okay. So that would be one hot encoding. And I'll write this one hot encoding here as a vector D or DI for the ith observation. And obviously this will have length G if there are G classes. Now what I can do is I could actually interpret such a vector here as a categorical distribution over three categories, or in general over G categories, where this is a deterministic distribution, right? So there's a 100% probability mass on class number two and zero probability mass on the other two classes. I can now also take a look at the prediction of my machine learning model that I'm going to use for, for this data set here, where the output of that machine learning model, as before, will use pi of xi as our notation or pi of xi under the parameter vector theta. Now, this is surely also a probability distribution because we defined it like that over G classes. And this also can be considered as a categorical distribution over the classes. So here you can see our di for here for five classes and not three. And here you could see a potential prediction from our machine learning model that would now be, that should now be compared against this true deterministic distribution of our truly observed class label. Uh, so here we would have, have observed the label four uh, and this would be um, yeah, a prediction 
um, a probabilistic prediction of uh, a potential ML model. Now, how could we now compare these two distributions? Well, we just learned in this chapter here a new, a new way of comparing two distributions. So how about we just try this out and see then what the result of that is. So I'll now compute the kohlberg leibler between this true deterministic distribution, so the D, and the model output, so the pi. And I'll do that for every point in my data set and sum it up. So I'll sum up all of these kohlberg leibler distances. Now, as we have learned a few minutes ago, this kohlberg leibler here, especially if we minimize with, res well, the kohlberg leibler if we minimize with respect to theta, so in the minimization, we can drop the entropy term and the only thing that remains then of interest to us because it depends on the theta is the cross entropy between d and pi. And I can now very very easily show that this is exactly the same as log loss minimization in risk minim or risk minimization with log loss as a loss function. So why is that? Well, I simply plug in the definition here for cross entropy. The next thing that I will do is I will write down what my vector d actually encodes. So this is a sum over these uh, g classes yeah, where I basically compare each entry of the d vector or whether I, yeah, whether I, I, yeah, I have a 1 in the d vector if the observed class is actually k and a 0 otherwise. So I just write that down here. And well, this I can also write like this here. So because all of these terms in this inner sum, uh, there will be g minus one zeros in there, yeah, where the associated products here can simply be ignored. And the only relevant term is actually this pi of, yeah, or the, the yi index of this pi vector. Yeah. And this is exactly our definition for risk minimization with log loss. Yeah, so I guess you can either take this formula here, or you can take this formula here. We've looked at this before. So hopefully now this terminology should be clear to you. If somebody says I'm using cross entropy as a loss function, they're basically referring to exactly this here. For completeness sake, we can of course also take a look at this for yeah, the Bernoulli loss for binary classification. This is simply a special case of what we did before. Here is the formula again for log loss for, yeah, for binary classification. And if we now say that our distribution P, so the true label distribution, represents a Bernoulli Y distribution. And with that, the Y is our 0, 1 encoded label. So this is always going to be a deterministic distribution. Yeah? So it will either look like this yeah? or this depending on, I shouldn't really put any probability mass here. So this would be y equals one and this would be y equals zero. So I have these, only these two cases. And again, we interpret pi or pi of x as a Bernoulli distribution, yeah, which is now the Bernoulli pi distribution with the parameter pi. Then the Bernoulli loss is simply the cross entropy between p now this true label distribution and pi of x. Last but not least, through this lens of risk minimization and prediction error, I can also here give you a further interpretation of entropy. So if you were not satisfied with me introducing yeah, the entropy formula and what it, what it encodes and what it means, and I usually enjoy explanations through a predictive lens, here is a, yeah, um, Another, another interpretation of entropy as, predict, as prediction loss. So again, let's assume now where we've understood that there's a connection between cross entropy and, and log loss. Let's assume that we are in a predictive situation. We have a categorical output in front of us. So a multi-class classification problem, but we have not observed any features or we're just modeling with a constant, with a constant model, okay? So the idea is that yeah we have we have some 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 data in front of us yeah so some 
multi-class yi's. And we want to model these with a probability vector pi. And the question now is, well, what's the optimal probability vector pi for a constant model that we could use to model such data? Well, we've already learned that this would be the simply the observed proportions of all of the classes. Yeah? So we take a look in the, our data set, we just calculate the pr proportions for every, for every class and this will be our uh, this would be our optimal model under log loss. Now, what is the average risk of this uh, optimal constant model? Well, I can now just plug that in my risk formula here. So I'll use the average risk. So I guess I might have, should have maybe put a bar here above the capital R. So just write down my log loss. The next thing that I can do is, yeah, okay, I, I guess I'm just putting the minus now here. So not a lot has changed. I will now plug in my optimal constant model. So this thing here, so these observed proportions into pi k. And yeah, then, no, actually, no, sorry, I'm, I'm not doing that. Sorry, that was wrong. What I will do is I will now take a look at these things here, yeah, and if I sum over the data, yeah, if I sum from i to n, and then I simply count how often yi is equal to k, and then I divide that by n, I get again this thing here, yeah. So the proportion in the data set of the class k occurring. So I can also write my formula as this here, yeah, and then see well that this proportion, well, that was exactly what I used for pi k, so now I have minus sum over k equals uh, 1 to g of pi k times log of pi k, which was exactly my formula here for entropy. Yeah? So again, in one sentence, entropy is the prediction loss that happens if I use the optimal constant model, which are the simply the proportions of the classes in the data set under log loss. Okay, that wraps up that session here and see you in the next one.